So this is test three from the classroom session. And I have got the whole screen uh, or the whole case notes on the screen. This is the first half and this is the second half. So the steps in which you interpret the case notes is the five step strategy as you know we have always been following this five step strategy what is it the first step for all of you is to read the notes to find out who and where am i this is very very important okay for example if you look at um a cat okay and you look at the tiger or you look at the leopard they all have some similarities for example sometimes the color could be the same uh the you know their skin uh, you know pattern could be the same but the size is different the you know the how fierce they are is different so at a first look they all seem similar but when you pay detailed attention to it, you may realize that, no, they are not the same. There is a difference there. So similarly, when you read the notes, you may think that, oh, I'm a nurse, okay? But depending on which kind of nurse you are, depending on uh, in which area are you working, this, this differs a lot. So as you practice further in writing, you should start uh, you know getting deeper and deeper into it and trying to visualize the whole story why uh, you know writing a referral letter is not so difficult from in clinical setup is because when you are in the clinical setup you are familiar with the setting you know the patient really well probably you have been caring for that patient for eight days so you know the whole story now the main challenge you have in the writing test is that you don't know the person you're not in that setup the only thing you have is that piece of paper okay and therefore when you start reading the case notes start thinking about the story of a patient when you are writing a letter you are basically writing their story how um, you know they got admitted how was their progress and then uh, what is their situation at the time of discharge and what are the future care requirements that you predict for that patient so if you look at it from that point of view, it could become much more easier. So as you practice further now, try to get deeper and deeper into, uh, you know, differentiating the different setups and differentiating your role depending on, uh, you know, in which setup you are. So let us read notes for this one. So here you will always have notes at the top. So here it says you are the charge nurse on the hospital ward where Mr. Ted Watson has resided during his hospital stay. And where you are, in which ward you are? Northwest Hospital Rehabilitation Unit. Okay, so you are in the rehabilitation unit. So this is not post-operative ward, this is not orthopedic ward, this is not surgical ward. So if the patient is being discharged from rehabilitation ward, it gives you an idea that it might be a long ago that he had the surgery. Isn't it? So you are in the rehabilitation ward. Now, after this, you read the writing task. Why do you read the writing task? This is your steps to, step two. You read the writing task to find out who is the target reader. Right? So that's your step two. These are very important steps. Do not skip them. They may sound very easy but they can significantly affect how you interpret the whole case notes and which kind of vocabulary you are using there.
So you read writing task to find out who and where is the target reader. So you go to the writing task and find out, write a letter of referral to the community nurse supervisor. Now, see, all of them are nurse, but depending on what role they play in the patient's care, the type of vocabulary you use, the type of sentences you use changes significantly. So here, they are not the community nurse, they are the community nurse supervisor, you know, the head of the community nurses. Where are they? At community nursing center, Newtown. So as you know, the word center mainly refers to an outpatient setting. Yeah? Center is not the ward, it is not the residential care home, it is not the nursing home. It is not rehabilitation care center, but community nursing center. That means it is just like your community health centers that we have the we have the concept of community health center in India, right? So you know that the nurse supervisor working in the community health center, the supervisor, yeah, may not herself or himself be responsible to actually go to the patient's home and provide care because they are the supervisor. So they may be responsible for delegating the job, they may be, be responsible for arranging uh, the staff, okay? but not they themselves will be going and taking care of the patient. So see your target reader is not the nurse herself, but the nurse supervisor. So this is very important to be able to differentiate. Third question you ask yourself is, what is the purpose of writing? Why are you writing this letter? Right? Now this can be answered probably in two ways. One is, uh, you know, you can say the, the main aim. Okay. And then the reasons. So the main aim why you're writing this letter, and then there could be some reasons or requests that you may be making that person. So now let us read this writing task. Where can I find out the purpose of writing? Again, I can find it out from the writing task. Okay. The main aim or the main purpose can be found from the writing task itself. So here it says, why are we writing? Request a home care nurse. So we are not requesting this community nurse supervisor to provide care. We are requesting a home care nurse who will be attending to Mr. Watson following his discharge. So again, when you request a home care nurse, yeah, it gives you an idea that the patient is not being transferred into their nursing home or into their community health center or nursing center. The patient is actually going home and the nurse, the home care nurse, will be visiting the patient at home and providing care. So once you are done with these three steps, the next two steps will be done together. You will be uh, doing those two steps at the same time. What are those two steps? You'll have to think what information is relevant to provide continued care. See here you have to take two things into consideration. Who is the target reader? And what they need to know to provide continued care. So if someone is a nurse or a doctor, you may think that they need to know everything, right? But here you have to 
also think about the purpose of writing what information they need to provide continued care only that you need to include so if they are a nurse or a doctor probably you may think that they should know the whole medical history but if the medical history has nothing to do with his current situation if the medical history has no role to play on in how he will be taken care of after his discharge then that becomes irrelevant right so you have to take two things in mind who is the target reader and what is the purpose of writing based on that you will be able to decide what information is relevant particularly what information is relevant to provide continued care and fifth is what information is irrelevant so see i i suppose this is for the first time you have come across a test which also assesses what you have not written okay conciseness and clarity one aspect of conciseness and clarity is what information is excluded what you have not written for that also you are being scored okay so if you write too much of information that is irrelevant for the target reader for the purpose of which you know you are writing this letter then you are going to get penalized in conciseness and clarity because you are not supposed to convert every bullet point that is given in the case notes into a sentence you are rather supposed to pick up what information is relevant for the target reader and then expand on it okay if every bullet point was to be converted into a sentence it is very easy isn't it i always need to put he is or she is and then complete that that's not the task the task is not writing sentences the task is writing a good summary and therefore if i have to write a good summary it's very important that i have been able to exclude the relevant details so now it is on you i'm going to get the screen the whole screen okay and i want you to decide for yourself what information do you think will be required for the target reader who is a community nurse supervisor what are they going to do they are going to arrange a home care nurse who will be visiting the patient following his discharge so read through the case notes once and then we will discuss this further
Okay, so I hope by now you would have been able to read through the whole case notes. Now, so we understand so far that this is a patient who was admitted to your rehabilitation board probably on 10th May. See when he had the surgery? 1st May. So that means the surgery didn't happen in your unit. Yeah. And again, you are in the rehab unit. So definitely the rehab unit would not have immediate post-operative patients. So he was admitted in your unit for what? Because of decreased mobility after surgical repair. Surgical repair with what? Dynamic hip screw of right neck of femur. Where the surgery took place? In Newtown Hospital on 1st May 2007. Right? So the reason for your rehab unit was not for the surgery. He was there because of decreased mobility. Why decreased mobility? Because of surgical repair of right neck of femur. That, that usually happens, isn't it? After the operation, the patient's mobility may be limited because the surrounding muscles, tissues may take a while to heal. And therefore, the patient may require physiotherapy and exercises to improve their mobility. Now, most of you, when you read the admission date and discharge date, you look at it just as two separate dates. You, you know, probably use discharge date as the date on which you are writing the letter and admission date you think that you need to mention in the introduction paragraph. But do not look at it as simply two separate dates. Look at the duration, May, June, July, and August. So almost three months stay. Is it usual? Does every patient after a hip operation stay for three months in the rehabilitation unit? Definitely not. The maximum duration could be three to four weeks. So this is again a part of your analytical skills, okay, critical thinking and analytical skills. You should be able to visualize the whole story. So here it says he stayed here in your rehab unit for three months. So that suggests you that probably his progress was slow, isn't it? So you then try and find out why he had slow progress. What was the reason for slow progress? Now you can find that out in the medical progress. Yes? So medical progress here tells you clearly that the progress, progress was slow. Why was it slow? Because he had urinary tract infection, okay, which was treated with antibiotics, but now it has fully resolved. And because he stayed for three months and had decreased mobility, he also developed a bad sore, a leg ulcer, ulcer on the right ankle. So this were the two reasons why his progress was slow. Now, he was admitted on 10th May. You are writing the letter on 12th August, three months after his admission. And what happened during his stay in the rehab unit is that he had this urine infection and he had the leg ulcer. So then you go on to check. So what is his current status? Okay. So does he still have urinary tract infection? No, it is given that it has fully resolved. What about the ulcer? So it is given here. Now it is decreasing in size. That means these were the complications which happened when he was in the hospital. But if you think from today on 12th August, they are not so serious a problem because the urinary tract infection has now completely resolved and the ulcer is also now healing or decreasing in size. So whenever you are writing a discharge summary, this is also a discharge summary, but you are also requesting the home care nurse to visit and provide care. So this is a discharge summary to a home care nurse. Okay. 
So when you are writing a discharge summary to a home care nurse, what you are trying to focus upon is the patient's current status. What is his current status? Because you are mainly requesting the follow-up care, the care after discharge. So the things that happened in the hospital are to be written just as a background detail. So it has to be a really brief summary. The main focus should be on today's situation. Right? So the urinary tract infection that they had because of that they had fever and then we treated it with analgesics and antibiotics. But if you look at the discharge plant here, they are not on any antibiotics now. That means these medications are now no longer relevant. The infection has also resolved now. They do not have that infection anymore. That means even though the case note is giving a large portion, I should be writing a very brief summary about this. So hardly, you know, maybe a one sentence summary about this. So what are the main problems that he still has? Right? So that you can see here that the infection has resolved so vitally he is stable so that is no longer a problem mobility he was admitted with decreased mobility so what is his situation now now also he is very slow but he can independently ambulate with a pickup frame so pickup frame is the walking aid that they use then for hygiene they need maximum assistance with showering and dressing because the mobility is very slow continence they have indwelling catheter and self-care self-care means the patient himself is able to take care of that catheter and how about the skin integrity so skin integrity is because of that ulcer yeah. so here it is given that deoderm dressing is to be changed weekly and psychosocial status how is he he is alert and reserved so the nurse, you know, imagine, think about a story of a nurse. Think if you are the one to visit this patient at home and provide care. So what all information would you need to know about that patient? You would need to know whether he's stable or not. You would need to know whether he can mobilize himself or not. What all support should I provide to him? If dressing is to be done, how frequent should I do the dressing? Which type of dressing should I use? Does he need any medication? So those are the points that we will need to know. So remember, the hospitalization detail is a background. The main focus is on current condition. And because of that, the discharge plan is a very important aspect. So what is the discharge plan saying? Continue with all home supports. So what are the all home supports that he's receiving? You can see in the social history. Right? So what is the home support that he's receiving? It is given that if his daughter supports him, then local day center twice weekly. So what is this local day center? It is like the club you have, but this local day center are by the government, uh, you know, that is, they, they are run by the government and they are basically activity centers for um retired people or people who uh, you know are lonely elderly so this local day center they these people will go there and then they play board games or you know if they are healthy enough to play other games they play other games with other elderly people there so it is basically an activity center recreational activity center so this patient visits it twice weekly and Another home support that he is receiving is local council home support visit. So local council is just like you have municipal council in your city. Similarly here, the local council. Now, what is home support visits is whenever these kind of patients are there who are elderly and if they are living alone and if they are not able to take care of their, uh, you know, house, then the council provides them with the housekeeping staff to help them with cleaning, to help them with, depending on how much 
you know help they need so that depends from patient to patient but the basic care that they can provide is cleaning the house gardening um, laundry um, if required cooking okay and if required taking the patient uh, to to different centers supporting them while they go out so those kind of home support visits are organized by the local council which means a representative from a local council uh, probably a housekeeping staff would be visiting the patient at home and helping the patient with their cleaning and depending on what sort of job is given to them okay so there is uh, uh, there is an assessment called aged care assessment so what is that aged care assessment is when these kind of patients when they are alone at home there is an organization called aged care assessment this organization visits the patient at home and tries to find out what are the requirements that they have like what what all kind of support they need and based on that they would arrange support from local council okay? home support visit so this is what it means to help them with cleaning cooking laundry whatever requirements are there so that has to be continued and so discharge plan is always prepared by the nurse who is at the hospital right because you are discharging the patient so it is your plan that you have made so one plan you have made is to continue with the home support visits what is the another plan that you have made community nurse referral you are already writing this letter right you are writing a letter to community nurse why are you writing you are requesting hygiene assistance management of wound urinary catheter change six weekly see it is given that they have permanent indwelling catheter so even this this permanent indwelling catheter which would be most of the time a silicon catheter right not the poly catheter so that needs to be changed every 6 weeks and ongoing monitoring and care so here the nurse is going to visit the patient at home and provide care okay so th- keeping that in mind you would decide what information is relevant for the target reader and what information is not relevant for them now we have understood the whole story we have understood the purpose of writing so the next step for us is to now decide what information would we need to provide to the community nurse supervisor so the discharge plan tells me what the nurse is supposed to do so the first thing that is given here is for hygiene assistance with showering and dressing so now think about a nurse who is going to visit this patient to provide shower and for helping them with the dressing here the dressing refers to helping them wearing their clothes right this wound management dressing is a different one and this is for the grooming so if they were to provide this care what kind of information would they know so one piece of information that they would know is how much assistance they need right because there will be some patients who will need minimum assistance which means you just need to hold their hand and take them to the to the shower and then they'll do everything on their own there will be some patients who may not be able to bend so they may need uh, you know care only with the lower limbs they may need your assistance with uh, cleaning the lower limbs there will be some patients who would not be you know able to do anything on their own maybe they are very forgetful or maybe they have weakness in their hands so you may need to provide you know 100% assistance to them so that is also important to mention how what to what extent they need assistance and there will be some patients who would only need supervision they'll be able to do everything on their own but just to make sure that they don't have a fall you need a nurse to be present when they are hang shark so first thing they need to know is how much assistance so he needs maximum assistance why he needs maximum assistance does he has any weakness no the only problem is that he has a very slow mobility right and he walks with a pickup frame so imagine if someone walks with a pickup frame that means they can't stand on their own alone so which means when you take them to the washroom or when they are actually having the shower probably they may need 
to sit and take shower or probably the nurse may need to hold them when they are having shower so this needs to be informed now if they are with a pickup train how do you manage that uh, how do you ensure that when they go to the toilet or when they are in the bathroom they don't have a fall because every time it may not be able to you know it may not be possible for them to take the whole pickup frame in the wash area or in the in the washroom so for that you would need certain supporting aids to prevent fall or to help with mobility so that is given here all home aids installed by ot ot here refers to occupational therapist so here it says all home aids installed by occupational therapist the nurse needs to know this as well because if these devices are not installed then the nurse may give reference to the occupational therapist and then the occupational therapist will install this what are those aids uh, you know maybe having a handle in the toilet having uh, you know grab bars so that the person can grab it and stand there having non sleep mat so these are all the supporting devices that may help the patient to prevent fall so you can see two types of situations sometimes it may uh, you know say that the reference has been given to ot and the ot is going to install but here it they have already been installed for this patient so you need to tell the nurse about this that they have been installed so the nurse gets the message that she doesn't need to worry about those things because they have already been done so this is also one point that i'm going to include okay because he leaves alone so there is no one no family member to assist with shower and therefore the nurse has to assist them with shower so that entire portion about mobility is covered now what is the second thing that the nurse has to do okay so second thing the nurse has to do is manage the wound so if she has to manage the wound what she needs to know first of all she needs to know where the ulcer is right so it is on the right ankle how the ulcer is at present so it is decreasing in size what kind of dressing is to be done deodorant how frequently it is to be done weekly okay so this is how you can decide what information you need to include because whatever things they have to do you need to provide some background to that so that they can successfully complete those tasks that is why i said what information is relevant for the target reader to provide continued care then third thing that the nurse has to do is to change urinary catheter so they should know which kind of catheter they have so they have permanent indwelling catheter how frequently should it be changed six weekly now if the patient has urinary catheter you know that you, you provide catheter care yes you clean the catheter maybe once or twice in a day depending on in which hospital you are working depending on the protocol of that hospital you clean it twice a day you change that um, you know the the gauze fees that you cover usually at the uh, you know at the patients and of the urinary catheter so is the nurse also supposed to do those things so no it is given that he is able to self care because it is permanent indwelling catheter so maybe he is having it for a long time it doesn't tell us that it was put in the hospital right it was definitely not put in the hospital because he is having permanent indwelling catheter for it because for urinary tract infection we don't put a permanent indwelling catheter permanent indwelling catheter is put mainly for patients who have incontinence of urine The, that is the major indication for having a permanent indwelling catheter or maybe someone who has a stricture so here they already had it i wouldn't say it was put in the hospital it doesn't say see medical progress here uh, this is about hospitalization right 
so it is not saying that in hospital we put it probably the urinary tract infection he had was because of this catheter isn't it if the patient is having catheter for a long time it puts them at risk of getting infection particularly if they are immobilized for a longer period of time so what she needs to know about urinary catheter is that he this person is already having self indwelling catheter he is able to take care of the catheter himself but he needs assistance or he needs the nurse needs to change the catheter after every 6 weeks okay and then ongoing monitoring and care so what is ongoing monitoring and care is the patient's vital status if there are any medications so it is given that vitally he is stable so i need to tell them that he is stable a febrile now he is a febrile and here also it says the infection has now fully resolved that means he is free of infection now so what the nurse needs to do is continue with the ongoing care so these are the points that we are going to include in our letter now how about this entire urinary tract infection episode okay what would i do definitely as we discussed i'm not going to write too much about this okay so these kind of points what you can do is you can mark like this and you can decide to generalize them generalize which means i'm not going to write too much about it i'll be just writing one sentence that his progress was slow due to urinary tract infection which has now resolved what medication was given to him not required any more because currently he is not on any of this medication and the infection has already fully resolved i would also not need to say what symptoms he had okay the details of symptoms is required only when the diagnosis is not confirmed here the diagnosis is confirmed that they had urinary tract infection and then it has resolved so i'm going to include this two points only urinary tract infection and it has now resolved okay and continue with all home supports so what home support is he receiving local day center local council home support and supportive doctor so these are the points that i'm going to cover now from his medical history if there is anything that is relevant for this nurse right so here it says that they are allergic to certain medications and therefore they are no, and b means note by and they are on medical alert plus plus so what does this plus plus mean moderate moderate risk yeah plus one is mild plus plus moderate plus 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 severe so they are on moderate risk why or moderate alert why because they have a history of anaphylactic reaction to these drugs so what is this medical alert in western countries there is a there is a protocol that these kind of patients particularly those who live alone who are at risk vulnerable and if they have specific medical condition uh, that can be life threatening or fatal then they uh, are advised to wear a belt in their hand that belt is known as medical alert belt so that belt usually have a chip in it so in case this kind of patients if they are unconscious or if they are found uh, you know they if they meet with an accident or if they have any emergency situation when they are not themselves able to tell anything about their own history then doctors can use this medical alert band and the chip in it to find out their medical details so this is how it works right so any patient who is vulnerable for example someone who is having asthma someone who is having allergic reaction to uh, stings okay the insect stings someone who uh, is epileptic so what if these patients are found unconscious okay and if there is no one around to tell that what has happened so in that case they would be asked to wear medical alert band and depending on how how much risk is there you would say plus 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 or plus 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 so plus is mild 
plus plus moderate triple plus is severe so this is just one point that you have from his medical history now from diagnosis how much would i include right the nurse is mainly going to support with assistance with activity of daily living dressing is only for the ulcer not for this surgery because surgery was on 1st may okay and we are writing the letter 3 months after that so in that case my main focus is not on what type of surgery was done my main focus is on decreased mobility so it's okay if i don't include the date of surgery any more and where it was done because see date of surgery is important if it was immediate post operative care if i was requesting post operative follow up care this is not post operative care it has been 3 months and i may not even go into detail of which kind of screw was put because i'm writing to a community nurse who has nothing to do with what the internal uh, you know devices that are put so i would focus on the surgical repair okay and i was i would mainly focus on the decreased mobility so this is how you can decide depending on what they have to do okay you will need to decide what information you need from their background so this activity that we did today should take us in exam of around 5 minutes time 4 to 5 minutes time okay and therefore that imagination creating a story in your mind is very important so here what do we have as a story that they had the operation but when they were admitted in rehabilitation unit they had urinary tract infection they developed ulcer and therefore there was a prolonged stay in the rehabilitation unit right now also they have very slow mobility okay the ulcer is now healing but the mobility is very slow and therefore a home care nurse needs to visit them to help them with their shower and with the dressing okay the daily visit will be required and then they also need some assistance with the urinary catheter that they have otherwise they don't have any psychosocial problems they are alert but reserved so now i have got the whole story and i know what points i am going to include now the next step for me would be to decide paragraphing i'll have to decide how would i group the information so when i start grouping the information okay. so my five step strategy is now done who where am i who is the target reader what is the purpose of writing what information is relevant what is not now next step for me is planning so what am i going to plan the paragraph i'll have to consider two things into uh you know my account like is two things one is what information can be grouped together and what is the priority what is the top most important information that i need to cover in my letter and what is the priority so based on this i will decide my paragraph now if we look at the case notes what information can we club together huh? 
we have mainly four topics to cover the hygiene and assistance related things mobility wound management urinary catheter change and ongoing monitoring and care so second paragraph what i can do is i can provide a brief detail of their hospitalization isn't it because in the introduction paragraph i would be writing why they were admitted because of decreased mobility and why am i writing this letter to request a home care nurse or to request the community supervisor that they should arrange a home care nurse who can visit the patient at home and provide care so second paragraph can include the details of hospitalization and if i am including the details of hospitalization in second paragraph okay what i can do is the things related to these the ulcer and the urinary catheter that too i can write in the second paragraph because i would be saying that they had urinary tract infection and i would be saying that uh, the, there was an ulcer so in the same paragraph i can say that the ulcer is now healing yes but the dressing is required and i can say in the same paragraph that they need change of the catheter so this point also i can write in the second paragraph so that i don't have to repeat things right and of course when i would write about urinary catheter i would have to say how frequently that needs to be changed so this also can go in the second paragraph now if these things are covered what is left for third paragraph right about mobility so i can write about mobility and hygiene in third paragraph i'll have to say how much assistance would they need and requesting them for the care now the other details social history home support visit okay like we have decided not to not to include this this point we can exclude very supportive uh, sorry hobbies because hobbies have no direct connection with it right and this home support all home aids installed this you have two options you can either include it in second paragraph sorry third paragraph because third paragraph you are covering for the mobility aspect okay you can either put it in the third paragraph or you can put all that information this with the social situation in fourth paragraph so see we went with priority right what is the topmost priority we should tell them this is a discharge summary we should tell them what all problems they had in the hospital now we have decided already that when it comes to this points we are not going to write everything right we are going to generalize them and we have decided already that we would not uh, include the symptoms we would not include the treatment we are just going to include the diagnosis and it has fully resolved and this point the medical alert you can write this as a short note okay. 
as it may not be the whole paragraph but a separate line yes. and why were they admitted the the reason for admission this one will be an introduction paragraph because we know that in introduction paragraph we always include two things the reason for admission and the purpose of writing so this point also requesting a home care nurse right and remember we are not writing to the nurse herself we are writing to the community nurse supervisor so that the community nurse supervisor herself is not going to visit this patient so i can't say please arrange a daily home visit i would have to say please arrange a home care nurse okay to help this patient or to visit this patient daily at home so this is my paragraphing now there will be some piece of information which whether you include or not include is not going to make a huge difference like for example here if you see a retired storeman now he is already retired so it really doesn't matter where he worked right but there will be some situations where their occupation would be relevant for their current condition so in that case you should write it similarly hobbies sometimes it may be relevant for their current condition so in that case you should write it and leaves alone ground floor flat so here ground floor flat means there are no risks if the person was having stairs in their house and it could be a risk because pick up frame they are walking with right so you know it is very difficult to climb stairs with a pick up frame if their mobility is very slow it is very difficult so if there were any were any risk factor in their house then i may include it here there are no risk factors so it, it is not making any difference even if you write it it is not a big deal but it is even if you don't write it it won't make any difference so there will be three kind of information one is the must need so if you don't include that information then your score will get low some information which you must not write so that if you include that information then your score will be low and there will be some information which would be both the sides like it is not going to make huge difference whether you write it or not so this uh, leaves alone is that kind of information and about now you are writing this letter to someone who doesn't know them right last time when we wrote letter we wrote to someone who is familiar with this patient so we said uh, your regular patient we did not give their introduction whether they are a widow or widower or you know uh, what they do or what are their background medical history because that gp already knew the patient here the person doesn't know the patient so therefore saying that he is a widower would be helpful giving some introduction right if you know the person if they know the person you may not need to give introduction but here you may need to give then whenever this information is given you don't need to include this name is fine but you don't need to include phone number or address of their next of kin that's not at all required because whenever you are sending a referral all the details of that patient would go it is not that only your referral letter is going to go your referral letter is just to provide them a summary of everything so you don't need to include this kind of things their phone number or address so those things are not required right admission date you would add in the introduction paragraph okay and discharge date you would write in the date that we usually write at the top so are we clear about the paragraphing so far any question please ask uh, in chat box okay
Okay, yeah, that is a really good question. Okay, her question is what date should we write in the inter in the date column that you write just before the salutation? So in exam, they would always ask you to write the date on which you are taking the test. Okay, so for example, if you are taking the test on second May, then you will be writing second May as the date of writing. The reason is they would arrange all the case notes also accordingly. So if the exam is taking place on 22 May 2020, then the a whole case notes will be arranged in that way where the patient you know, might have been admitted on 15th of April and then they might be getting discharged on 1st May or 2nd May or 3rd May. So you don't need to worry at all about what date to write. It is always, always the date of exam. The date on which you are taking the exam, that date would be written. So you don't really need to worry about date. Okay. Is there any further question about paragraphing or interpretation of the case notes or any um, words or any symbols that? I might have missed, and if you still don't understand what it means. Okay. 